Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. In this video, I'm going to show you how to envision the negotiation in advance. And literally, as an automotive salesperson, when your manager gives you a pencil, I'm going to show you how to walk in. I'm going to show you what to do, what to say, and I'm going to show you how to bump them two, three, four, five hundred dollars a month. Do it ethically and be a pro at it. And they'll love you for it for being great at your job. Watch this full video. It'll change your life. Check it out. All right, guys, so here we go. This is a video right here that a lot of people don't understand. Now, by the way, I'm going to walk you through a process of what being an amateur looks like, and then I'm going to show you what winners do. So number one, I want you to grab a pen, grab a piece of paper. Clearly, this whiteboard is going to be my blank piece of paper or is going to be my worksheet, okay? If I'm a salesman, my manager just gave me a proposal or a pencil of some numbers. It would say like $5.99 a month. It would have a down payment of $2,000 down. It might have a sell price of $38,000. It would have maybe a trade-in value of $7,000. And maybe it even has an interest rate and a term, okay? Now, based off these numbers, whatever you're given, I'm not gonna get into that, your job is to go and say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Customers, I've got some options A, B, and C. Which one would you like to do? And your job is to do what? Come out with a signature, okay? On either A, B, or C. Does that make sense? Now, listen to me. There's, there's four types of salespeople, right? You got order takers and tour guides. Okay, we know who they are. They're handing out business cards. They ain't closing nobody. You got salespeople. They're good at selling. They can't close the dang screen door. Okay, no big deal. We're gonna teach you to close. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm gonna tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Then you got closers. What do closers do? Well, closers close, which means, hey, Andy, I know you don't want to do the $5.99. Could you do $4.50? And then they come out with the commitment at $4.50, which means they negotiated down. So we'll say, oh, dude, good job closing your deal, but you negotiated down. We'll call you a closer, but you didn't close it for all the money. And then you got master closers. Master closers can close anybody, anytime, anyplace, anywhere, and I wanna to explain to you how they do it. Write this down, the way you present something is the way the client perceives it, okay? Is $5.99 a high payment? I don't know, who's presenting it, okay? If you got an amateur presenting it and I walk into the store and I'm wanting to be at $300 a month, can I ask you a question? When I was sitting at the kitchen table with my wife having a conversation about what we wanted to spend on the monthly car payment, $300 a month sounded good to us. Now the question is, as we're working that out, as vehicles are more expensive, as interest rates are up, as monthly payments are higher, as trade-ins are worth less money, I mean, that payment could fluctuate and adjust. So who's presenting the new payment? That's whether it's a good deal or not. And by the way, write this down. A great deal is doing a good job. If you treat people like a million dollars, they'll pay you all the money. If you give somebody a car for half off and treat them bad, they'll think you ripped them off. The way you present something is the way the client perceives it. So this is all about presentations. By the way, amateurs, okay, say things like this, up to no more than, okay? Meet, you already know what I'm gonna say, finish it. Meet me in the what? The middle, you already knew what I was gonna say. How about reward yourself, your wife's worth it? How about all that stuff, right? And I'm gonna explain what I mean. Guy goes in, he says, great news, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, $5.99 sign here, let me get your new car cleaned up for delivery. And the guy goes, oh man, there's no way, I was really wanting to be at 400. Oh, you're wanting to be at 400? Okay, well, if I'm at 599 and you're at 400, could you do up to, that's what they say, could you do no more than if you had to? And then they say 500. Would you meet me in the middle? You're at 400, I'm at 599. Could we do 500, just meet in the middle? Guys, you're an amateur, that's a joke. Okay, that's been going around for the last 20 years and I'm telling you, if that's what's coming out of your mouth, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. And if that's what you've been taught, you need to reteach yourself and unlearn this. 
okay? By the way, um, all of this right here is amateur land. Now I'm gonna show you how to do it the right way, the ethical way, the real way, okay? By the way, I want you to write this down right now. Ownership payments. I believe in monthly payments. I know what they are. It is a payment that it costs to, to buy something. But an ownership payment is the real payment. So do me a favor, grab a pen, grab a piece of paper, and I want you to do me a favor. I want you to write down envision. The negotiation in advance. Okay, now listen to me. I want you to understand what I want you to focus on and what I want you to look at, okay? By the way, if your payment's $5.99 a month, okay, and they're currently paying $400 right now, let's say they're paying $400, you're currently thinking when your manager gives you a pencil, by the way, we're gonna say the client wants to be at 400. Andy, I'm paying 400 now. I really don't wanna go no more than 400. That's where I wanna stay. And then you look at your paper and you're like, oh man, I'm at 599. What's the first thing you say? The payment's going up $199. And we call that a bump. We're gonna to have to bump the client up to $199 more, which will be 599. It's not a bump. What it is is that, look, they're currently paying 400, but I assure you this new car has some benefits in some other areas that will save them money. However, this vehicle, even though it's lower in a monthly payment, it's going to cost more money in other areas for them to own it. Write down that word, own. Okay, so what does that mean? We are going to switch from the way we think from monthly payments, monthly payments, Two, ownership payments. Now listen to me, if you guys are watching this right now and I can have your minds and you won't get distracted, I will show you how to close big deals. I will teach you to present in the top 1% of the industry, which are the top earners, I will show you how they present and how they close. And by the way, notice I said ethically, write down ethically. Because we're not people say, oh, this guy's taking people out of their budgets. No, we're not. No, we're not. People are spending money and they're already out of budget spending money in other areas. We're just doing a good job of explaining money. Listen to me. You can't talk to people about money unless you understand money. And I'm going to teach you about money in this video. So there's monthly payments, which are what? The monthly payment on the car you pay to the bank. And then there's ownership payments. What are ownership payments? Write this down. Cost of ownership. Okay, so when I'm envisioning the negotiation in advance, you know what I see? I see this. I see a $5.99 payment on a piece of paper. I see a customer paying $400 now, and they're saying they don't want to go a penny over. So what I'm thinking is this. Hey, and I need you to write this down. By the way, this is a close, but this is the facts. Okay, ready? Write this down. People work hard for the money. Draw a money sign. People work hard for the money. Is this the truth? Yep. They put their money in the bank. Okay. Where does the money go? It goes in the bank. And then when the money leaves the bank, that's the real money spent. Okay, now before I go into this close, I'm letting you understand the close before I do it. Because if you don't understand it, then you're gonna see it, and then you don't really understand it, and it's not gonna work. Remember, there's what you say, how you say it, and do you believe in what you're saying? In order for you to say what I'm about to teach you, you're going to need to believe it, okay? Work hard for your money, you put your money in the bank, when the money leaves the bank, okay, that's the real money spent. Where does money get spent? Number one, on a monthly payment, right? that goes to the bank. That is one form of money. Number two, does it go in gas? Does these people have to slide a card every week to go to the gas station? Yes. What about maintenance? Huh? Do they gotta spend money in maintenance? If their car breaks down right now, or their air conditioner stopped working, or a heater core goes out, or a fuel pump goes out, do they have to pay for that? Absolutely. freaking -lutely. What about insurance? Is that something that comes out of the bank? Yes. So you work hard for your money, you put your money in the bank, when the money leaves the bank, that's the real money spent. Right here. Monthly payments, gas, my bad, gas, maintenance and insurance. These are the four areas that come out, but the one that you can control is this, is your mind. You need to see it in advance, what you're going to do. So now I'm going to go in on a pencil, okay? And I'm gonna write one out here right now, and I want you to watch me navigate through. Now listen, I want you to write this down. In a seated position, everything will be written. Listen, if you're sitting down with somebody, by the way, I'm gonna show you something. Where do we sit? Everybody ask, Andy, where do I sit? Okay, so here's a table, okay? This is the table, and we're gonna talk about what amateurs do, and we're gonna talk about what pros do. So amateurs, one will sit over here, and one will sit over here. And then they present, 
and this person objects. It's you against you. That is wrong. We are going to come over here or come next to them right here. When we present, we're going to say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, great news. Um, we've got a way to go here. I'm going to explain all this to you. By the way, in case you have any questions, I'm going to slide next to you. So if you have any questions, you can tell me. Is that okay? Do you mind if I slide over here? Awesome. You guys are amazing. Boom. What did I do? I repositioned myself from being here to there now. Okay? Get knee to knee. Write that down. Knee to knee. Get, get knee to knee. Get next to them. Okay? That way when you explain it, you present it. It's really hard for them to tell you no when you're that close. Number two, listen to me. There's people watching this video and they're haters. And they're like, oh my God, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't like to get close to people. Listen to me. I'm teaching you how to do your job like a professional. I love connections with my clients. Listen to me, I've done a great job the whole time. I have the right, everybody write this down. Earn the right to ask for their business. Earn the right to ask for their business. Earn the right to sell them your product. Earn the right to get next to them, okay? Clearly, if somebody doesn't know me and they're watching this, they say, well, I wouldn't let you get next to me. Well, listen, I ain't earned the right yet. But I promise you, if I've been dealing with you for a while, I'm going to earn the right to get right here. So in a seated position, everything is written. You're going to get knee to knee, and you're going to be able to almost like put your arm around them, although you won't. But you could. You're that close. And that way, when you're presenting it, you have more control of the deal, and you're more influential. By the way, a vast majority of my wealth has come from the ability to influence and persuade. And I do a lot of this when I'm presenting. And you're going to learn in this video how to do it too. So let's write out a scenario, okay? So we got a guy buying a 2021 Kia Optima. In case anybody wants to know, that is a car that gets decent fuel mileage. It's kind of a mid-sized car. We're going to act like it has 10,000 miles. Cool? By the way, is that what they're buying? Yes, this is buying. Okay, now what are they trading? We're going to write trade in over here. Okay, they're trading a 2012 Honda Pilot. That's a mid-sized SUV. We're gonna say it has 80,000 miles. Cool? Now look, that's pretty low miles for a 2012, isn't it? Yeah, that's a nice car. That right there is a 2021. It's a sedan, which means what? You're looking at some things right now, okay? It's got 10,000 miles, it's got less miles. What do we know? Let's just talk about what we know. Is this vehicle right here still under warranty? Yes or no? Yes, it is. Is this vehicle still under warranty? No, it's not. Okay, does this vehicle get better gas mileage? Yes, it does. Does this vehicle get great gas mileage? No, it doesn't. Okay, now this client is going to come into the store and they're gonna say, Andy, I am paying $300 a month in a payment now and I don't wanna go up. Why? Well, they've got a 10 year old car and they're like, I wanna be at 300. But now watch this. Our payment is going to be 600 a month. Is it double? Yes. Well, when you're looking at the payment to the payment, an amateur salesman, everybody say amateur. Amateur salesman goes, oh, they're going up $300 a month. No, they're not. They're not going. They're paying $300 now plus more money in gas plus they got to pay when they maintenance their car. Do you feel me? That's $300. So how much are they really paying? They're really paying more, okay? So I want you to understand how to get a leverage in negotiation. So right now, the pencil's gonna be, we need $600. Where's the client at? $300, and they say they don't wanna go a penny more. Can I ask you a question? How much money's the bump? $300. Would you like to lessen that gap? Yes? Let me give you some ways to do it, okay? Everybody write down Benjamin Franklin. This is the close. Now we know what car you're buying, right? We know what car they're trading, and we know what the monthly payment we need to achieve is $600. I'm gonna act like this is a pencil. Hey, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, got great news. Right now, we can get your car cleaned up and delivery and put it in your driveway for $600 a month. We're gonna pay off your old vehicle. Obviously, I'd go over any other numbers that are on the piece of paper. And then I'd say, sign right here, let me get your new car cleaned up for delivery. By the way, I forgot to ask you, when did you wanna set your first payment due towards the beginning of the month, the middle of the month? What's gonna work best for you and your family? They say, Andy, I can't afford 600. What are we gonna say? Everybody say, say this, say, stop. We're gonna write down, I totally understand. Let me show you how affordable your new vehicle is. Dang, man. And then I'm gonna show you what to do. Write it down, I totally understand. Let me show you how affordable your new vehicle is. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna flip the paper over right now. Flip the paper over. When I flip the paper over, what am I going to do? Benjamin Franklin. Okay, so you guys don't know this. We're gonna draw a cross 
down the piece of paper, just like this. You ready? We will always write old car over here. On this side, we will write new car. Okay? Are you ready to go to work? I want you to write the current payment they're currently paying now, and I want you to write the monthly payment on the new vehicle. Are you ready? Now, remember this. People work hard for the money, put the money in the bank. When the money leaves the bank, that's the real money spent. What is the number one thing that they will be spending on every week and most frequently? Maintenance, gas, gas. So we'll start out with fuel. Okay, you ready? Hey, I totally understand right here, Mr. and Mrs. Customer. This is your old car. You're currently paying $300. Let me show you how affordable your new vehicle is. Your new car, you're paying $600 right now. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, obviously, um, you do spend get money on fuel every single week to drive your uh, 2012 Honda Pilot. How much money, roughly, does everybody say ballpark, roughly? How much money, roughly, do you spend a week in gas? Ballpark. Don't ask miles per gallon. Don't say how far do you drive. Okay, just say how much do you spend a week in gas? Write that down. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, roughly how much you spend a week in gas? Ah, Andy, I don't know. No, just roughly, guys. If you had to guess, what do you think it would be? They say, ah, we spend $75 a week right now, which sounds about right for a 2012 Honda Pilot. I say, okay, cool, no problem. $75 a week, what did we say? In a seated position, everything is written. $75 a week in gas times four weeks in a month. That's roughly $300 a month in gas right now to drive your older vehicle. Now, if I take the monthly payment, the $300 a month that you pay to the bank in your payment, right? I'm not the best at math, but 300 for gas and 300 a month of payment is $600 a month to own. Does that make sense? <laughs> Watch, ready? Everybody listen to me, Mr. and Mrs. Customer. Even if you didn't buy my new vehicle today, wouldn't we agree with your old car it's costing about $600 a month to own? Absolutely. Now, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, with the new vehicle, wouldn't you agree? Better gas mileage, less money spent? Yeah, we would. Okay, cool. You're spending 75 a week now in gas. Guess what? On the new vehicle, that's going to get cut in half. It's very simple. $30 a week in gas, use 40, whatever. $40 a week in gas, guess what? Four weeks in a month, that's $160 a month in gas. That's how much it's going to cost to drive your new vehicle for fuel a month. I'm also going to take the $600 payment that you're going to be making to the bank. And what does that show me? That shows $760 a month is how much it's going to cost between the ownership of gas and the monthly payment. Now, I'm not the best at math, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, but watch this. We're going to take the $760 that the new car is going to cost to own total, and we're going to take the $600 you're currently paying now. And what is that? That shows me that this new vehicle is about $160 more than what your old car is costing. But it's not. Why? What's the second thing we're going to talk about? Remember this? You work hard for your money. You put your money in the bank. When the money leaves the bank, that's real money spent. What did we cover? We covered gas. Remember that? We just covered that. We got the payment now. What are we going to do over here? Maintenance. Okay. Let's get to it. Okay. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, it looks like it's about $160 more than what you're prepared to pay, but it's actually not, Mrs. Johnson. You know why? Because right now on your older vehicle, it's a 2012 Honda Pilot with 85,000 miles, and guess what? If something was to break, it would cost you money. If we go to Edmunds.com right now, watch this. Everybody write that down, Edmunds.com. One of the most trusted sites in the world for automotive consumers. I bet Edmunds.com would probably tell you that that car would cost about three to four thousand dollars a year to maintain with all maintenance and upkeep. Go look it up. Go look up any car on Edmunds.com. I, I used to look it up every single time before I did a presentation because guess what? I would just get my information from Google. She's our mother. She never lies. And it's right there on Edmunds.com, the trusted site. And then I would have that number. And I would even tell them, go to Edmunds.com. It's even going to have a higher number than what I'm telling you. But by the way, let's do some simple math. Can you do me a favor? How much money do you need? $160. Okay? I'm going to tell you something real quick. The national average, what it costs to own per year in maintenance, uh, uh, probably a 10-year-old SUV, is at least $2,400 a year. At least. And I bet it's double that. But we're going to say it's 24, so I'm going to go into the close. Are you ready? So, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, I'm going to take the $760 a month that you're currently going to be paying on your new vehicle with gas and payment. And then I'm going to take the $600 you're currently paying now on your old car, which even if you didn't buy mine, it would cost you $600 a month between gas and payment. And I'm going to take the $760 from the $600. And it shows me the new vehicle is about $169 more or $160 more than what you're wanting to pay. But actually, it's not Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. You know why? 
because the vehicle doesn't have a warranty on it. Your 2012 Honda Pilot, the national average, what it costs to maintain a vehicle that's currently out of warranty is about $2,400 a year. Let me explain so you understand. You have to sell it now. Mr. and Mrs. Customer, this is a timeline of a year. This is from January, this is all the way to December. Let's say you're driving down the road right here, and let's say in February, right, fuel pump goes out, guess what? Let's say it costs 1200 bucks. Well, if you don't have a warranty and it doesn't cover that part, who's gonna be paying for it? You are. Well, if you spend the $1,200, and then you know how used cars are, right? You, you drive 10 months, nothing happens, look how happy you are, Mrs. and Mrs. Johnson. You have the best day of your life. Then November, guess what happens? Heater core goes out. You gotta fix it, you gotta have the heater working in the car. Costs 1200 bucks. 1200 and 1200 is 2400 for the year. Since we're talking about a maintenance payment, guess what? We're gonna divide that by 12 months in a year. That shows me about $200 a month is how much you're gonna have to budget for maintaining your vehicle because you don't have a warranty on your older car. Now, on the new car, 2021 uh, 20, Kia Optima, 10,000 miles, five years, 60,000 mile warranty. If you're driving down the road and you know something breaks, it's gonna be paid for. It's not gonna cost you any money. You're gonna pull it into service drive and they're gonna fix it and guess what? You're handled. So on your new vehicle over here, on your new vehicle, it's gonna cost zero dollars to maintenance and on your used one, it's gonna cost $200. So the fact that we thought this vehicle was $160 more than what you're prepared to pay, really adding in the maintenance, my new car actually saves you $40. So Mr. and Mrs. Customer, the fact that when you trade in your old vehicle today and buy your new car, not only will be saving you $40 a month with all the total ownership costs, your ownership payment is going down. Guess what? When gas goes to $5 a gallon, your new car is going to get paid back at the pump where your old car would have just cost you uh, more money. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, take your beautiful family out to dinner and save yourself all this money. What I've learned is that you work hard for your money, you put your money in the bank, and when the money leaves the bank, that's the real money spent. The monthly payment may be a little higher, but the ownership cost is much less. In the end, if we were to ask your bank account which one is the better buy when it comes to saving you money, it would say buy the new car and ditch the old one. And heaven forbid something like a motor or something goes out on that old car, guess what? I don't care if it costs $10,000 or $6,000. Who would have to pay for it? You would. Ask me on the new car if the motor went out. Who would have to pay for it? We would. Guess what? Welcome to a fixed payment versus a variable payment. That's why everybody's trading. Technology is beautiful. This is a newer, nicer car. It's 10 years newer. And guess what? You're going to be saving money. Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, thank you so much for your business. Sign right here. Let me get your new car cleaned up for delivery. Now, I want to explain something to you. We're going to stop. We're going to talk for just a second, okay? Number one, what do you see behind me? That's a worksheet. Can you see the roadmap? Can you see the roadmap? Yes, you can. If you go back and you watch this video 20 times, you can literally write down word tracks. Better gas mileage, less money spent. Work hard for your money, put your money in the bank. When the money leaves the bank, that's your real money spent. Okay? Even if you bought, even if you didn't buy my new car today, Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, wouldn't you agree that currently on your old car, this is what you're spending? Notice how we relieved and removed the pressure off of them. Even if they didn't buy my new car, they would understand that their ownership cost is more than just a monthly payment of 300, it's actually 600. I've made them identify that, okay? What I am doing is closing, which really is the truth. I'm closing them to understand how money really works. That a monthly payment, okay, a monthly payment is just a monthly payment. For everybody out there that doesn't understand this, I wanna ask you a question. If I had a car and it was $100 a month, and somebody said, hey, I'm coming in looking for a car. And I said, okay, I've got one, it's 100 a month. Also, I've got another car, it's a little bit nicer, um, it's $300 a month. Most people would say, well, I'll take that car, okay. Well, what if that was the payment, but I told you the ownership payment on this car was 400 a month. So the total cost to own was 500. But on this car, the total ownership cost was only 100, which it equaled out to be 400 a month. Now, which car would you want? Oh, you'd want this one. Why would you want that one? The monthly payment is higher by $200 than that car. You know why you want that one? Because the ownership cost is less. You work hard for your money, you put your money in the bank, when the money leaves the bank, that's the real money spent. Now, I'm gonna explain this to you, okay? There's some things that you're gonna need to understand right now. Get your pen, get ready to write. If you want to close every deal for all the money and have your clients happy to pay the money 
because vehicles are expensive, they do cost a lot, but they do have a lot of benefits in areas that a lot of people don't see that you're going to explain to them. You're going to need to do one thing, and it's two words, it's called master communicator. You're going to need to be able to communicate, which is to close and master it. Write down what a master communicator is right now. Number one, a master communicator is somebody who makes it easy to say yes to. Write that down, easy to say yes. Did I make it easy for you to say yes to this? Yes, I did. Okay, it's somebody that makes it hard to say no to. I made it hard to say no to this, didn't I? Okay, write that down. Also, number three, make it the customer's idea every single time. I know one thing for sure, when my wife makes something my idea, I love to do it. You know what I mean? Just my idea, right? That's the way the world is. And as crazy as it sounds, that's why salespeople have the greatest job in the industry. Their job, if they're professionals, not if they're amateurs, but if they're professionals, is to take the pressure off the deal. Their job is to make it easy for people to have fun while spending money, which they want to. And honestly, it's, it's inflation's going up and vehicles are costing more money and everything's just going up. Salespeople can explain, if done right, which I did, and ethically, that it's just money justification. I justified where the money was at in other areas. As I used to go in, and by the way guys, I know 200 other closes. This simple close, this simple close will close you more deals and make customers when they're done, they say, you know what, I've never been explained that way. We'll do it. That's it, and by the way, is it the truth? Yes, it is the truth. I want you to do me a favor right now. If you would like to learn more closes like this one, if you would like to learn how to be a master communicator, by the way, be a professional speaker, um, articulate your words a certain way to push people, influence and persuade them to go in the direction you want them to go and do it ethically, do it right and be able to make a half a million a year. I created a program called Project 500. Project 500 teaches salespeople how to make a half a million a year selling. I want you to shoot me a text message if you would like information on it. If this video has brought value to you and you say, you know what, man? I need to start educating myself. I need to get better and I need to be able to talk like that. I need to be able to explain things like that. I don't want you to be me, I want you to be the best version of you. I'm gonna teach you, okay? I want you to shoot me a text right now, write down my cell phone, 918-210-0254. I'm gonna say that again, 918-210-0254. You're gonna text me, say, Handy, I was watching your negotiation video. My name is Tom. I'd love to get some information on Project 500. I'll reach out to you. I've got your back for life. I am teaching you this stuff for free. You know why? Because if you can learn this, you'll be light years ahead of everybody else, but I want you to write one more thing down before we end this YouTube video. The only way to wealth, okay? You wanna be wealthy? Well, there's only one way, okay? It's through self-education. And what I want you to do right now is that I want you to make a decision, okay? Are you gonna find security in outside things in the world, like, like material stuff, like cars, money, houses? Is that where your security lies? You know, I watch somebody lose their job and they think their life fell apart. They're fell apart. Yeah, they have no security inside of them, it's in their job. I watch them lose a car or have to trade something in or downgrade in life for a minute and they lose all security. They're like, oh my God, my life's falling apart. Or a girl breaks up with them, they're like, oh my God. Dude, listen to me. Security should belong inside of you, okay? When I sit down with my wife and my three ch children at the kitchen table, my family feels warmed knowing that I have security inside of me as the man or if you're the woman of your house. Um, that you know what, if we lost it all today, we could restart and have it all again tomorrow. It's no big deal, this wasn't my luck. I've educated myself, I'm very smart, I know how to get ahead, and I would love for you to feel the same way and build up security inside of you. And what I've learned as you train, you build that security up inside of you, and that's what separates you from everybody and makes you a one percenter, okay? So I love you guys, I got your back for life. Shoot me that text at 918-210-0254. Let's kick some butt, let's go. Hey guys, I just wanna tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.